So today what I'd like to do is to go over this worksheet with you. Um, and there's really four ways you can do this. Um, the very best thing you could do is to do this whole worksheet in its entirety first and then come back and watch the video. Um, the second thing you could do is just start this worksheet and when you get stuck, then go ahead and start the video at that point. Uh, the third thing you could do is just kind of follow along uh, push pause when I ask you to do some of the parts on your own and just kind of we'll kind of do it together and the absolute worst thing you could do would be just to watch the video and that's it you won't learn much doing that so anyway um, at this point go ahead and read over what the quest what the um, setup for this problem is and answer a and B and then I will come back and we'll go over those two okay so push pause now All right, so just to make sure that you understand uh, what this question is asking or what's going on in the setup, uh, essentially we're dropping a ball from a certain height and timing how long it takes the ball to, to traverse this distance. Uh, and then we're just gonna change that height um, for various distances and see what the times are for these distances. By the way, this would be the same thing, same result if we dropped it say from two meters and then timed after traversing each of these distances how long it would take to traverse those distances. So just kind of a way of doing um, this longer problem, two, two meters, um, but finding kind of the intermediary times for the various distances. So hopefully you got this graph. Graph plotting this is not very difficult. You should have noticed first of all that this was not a linear graph. Um, in fact, this is a parabolic looking graph, uh, concave up in structure at this point. And um, yeah, so hopefully you're able to graph that. Uh, letter B, what is the shape? Tell you about the motion. So the shape, again, notice it's this parabolic shape, this concave up. Notice that at every time interval, the distance that we traverse is going to be smaller. So for here, for example, at 0.14, right, it only travels a distance of um, about 0.1 meters. However, at 0.32, which is a little bit more than double, it's traveled five times as much distance, right? So notice that the distance traveled keeps increasing for each of these little intervals. And so what that's telling you is that this is the velocity is increasing, right? And that means that there is an acceleration. So we would write something like there is an acceleration. Okay, because, well, various reasons. You can say it's a, a concave up graph, right? They're asking what does the shape tell you about this motion? Well, the concave up graph means that the velocity is increasing and that's an acceleration, right? And you can go into the details of what I just talked about earlier. Okay, all right, so at this point, go ahead and pause it and answer question C, and then unpause when you're done. So question C is asking us to find the average velocity between each time interval. So for example, um, the first time interval is here between zero and 0 0.14 seconds. So remember, when we're looking for a velocity average, that's essentially the, uh, the displacement over time, right? But for each of the intervals. So for example, for that first one, we'd go, um, the displacement is gonna be 0 0.1 minus zero divided by the time which would be 0.14 minus zero also. Okay, this would be 0.714 meters per second. Let me go ahead and do one more just so you can see. Um, so the next one we'd be going from 0.14 to 0 0.32, 0 0.15 to 0 0.1 to 0.5. So when you do this one, just make sure that you're finding the true displacement. A common mistake would just be to divide 0.5 divided by 0.32. Well, 
Well, that's going to give you the average between 0 and 0.5. And what you're looking for is the average between 0.1 and 0.5. So we'll subtract 0.5 minus 0.1, and then we want the time interval between those two. So that would be 0.32 seconds minus 0.14 seconds. Okay, and you'll calculate that, and you'll get 2.22. So just as we mentioned previously, you can see that that velocity is increasing as we're going on. So go ahead and take a look at your answers. Um, make sure you got what I got. If not, go ahead and pause this now and um, calculate these to make sure you're getting the right answer. By the way, what you're doing, you're finding the average between these two, which this is also telling you is the instantaneous velocity at that midpoint. Essentially, you're kind of finding, if this was a line, you'd be finding the, the slope of that line. So you're also finding the, um, that instantaneous velocity at the halfway point. So for example, at 0 0.07 seconds, the velocity right here would be 0.714 meters per second, and so forth. And you're going to use that for part D, that concept for part D. So go ahead and do part D. For part D, you're going to um, make a graph as well. So um, the graph should be on the back of this paper. So push pause now, do this, and then we'll come back to it. So let's go ahead and do part D. Um, this should be what your plotted points look like. Um, so before we um, before we do this, let's just discuss like the biggest mistake people typically make on something like this. Um, so usually what people will do is they'll say, all right, here's my 0.14 time, and I'm going to plot 0.714. But remember, this is the average velocity between 0 and 0.14, which means this would be the instantaneous velocity at the halfway point here between these two. So what you're going to want to do is not plot the 0 and the 0 0.14, or the 0 0.14 and the 0.714. You're going to want to plot the time at which our velocity is 0.714. So that time is just going to be the midpoint between these two, which would be 0 0.07. So you're going to go ahead and do that for all of these. You're going to want to make sure you're plotting that midpoint time for each of these here. Okay, so if you made that mistake, go ahead and make the correction and then come back. Once you've done that, um, you should get some points that look like this. Remember, we're using our halfway point. The next thing is to find our best fit. Now, this is a linear graph. So you're going to try to find some point, some line that best fits the data. Um, so there's a number of ways you can do this. Um, typically the rule of thumb is you want about the equal number of points above the line as you have below the line. Um, so here you can see I have three, one, two, three above and one, two below. Um, sometimes what you can do, and this one I'm noticing, if you look at this, these four points are almost perfectly linear. And since this was a, a lab, you know, this is experimental data, um, in a problem like this, I would probably go ahead and draw my best fit with these four points and just kind of treat this as maybe an outlier. So I'm going to go ahead and graph it like that. We can see what we get for our answer and how that compares. So if you notice, these three are almost, these four points are almost perfectly linear there. So I'm going to go ahead and graph it like this, um, but uh, it would be accept perfectly acceptable for you to as well take that into account and maybe have a line like this. Okay, all right, why don't you go ahead and push pause and answer question letter E. So let's calculate the slope. Um, the biggest mistake that people make, actually um, pointed out here, you're going to want to make sure that you use points off of your line, not from your data. In other words, you don't want to take two points that you used had on your data table. Okay, so for example, 0.14, uh, sorry, let's say like 0.14, 
0 0.07 and 0 0.714. You don't want to take points from here because those don't necessarily represent the slope of your best fit. For example, let's just say you chose these last two points over here. Notice here the slope of these two points is different than the slope of your line, right? This is a steeper slope. Even the slope, say, of these two points right here is going to be a steeper slope than the slope of your line. So just remember, always take points off your line, not from your data, um, and you typically look for maybe a nice intersection point. So say from here and here, just makes your calculations a little bit easier. Look for somewhere on the graph where it, you get a nice intersection. So let's go ahead and do that. So remember, we're finding our slope. That's going to be, in this case, delta v over delta t, okay, rise over run. Okay, so the rise here is going to be from 4 minus 2. Remember, this is meters per second. And then from here, we have 0.4 to 0 0.2. So this looks like it's going to be an easy calculation, minus 4 minus 0.2 seconds. All right, and that's going to give you 10 meters per second per second. So what does this slope represent? Well, you know, looking at the units, it gives you a good indication, or looking at your delta V over delta T as well. So this slope represents acceleration. And this would be specifically the acceleration due to gravity, because remember what was happening in the problem is you had your little marble and it was accelerating downwards. All right, so let's go ahead and finish this up. Why don't you do letter F, G, and H if you can, and then I'll kind of walk you through this last part. So for this problem, what we're trying to do, if you notice when we had distance and time, when we plotted distance and time, this produced a concave up type graph, right? And so what they're asking you to do is say, uh, can you plot a graph using distance and time variables and produce a linear relationship? Now this is a process called linearization, and we're going to use this a lot throughout the year. And we're trying to linearize this curved graph, change it from a curved graph into a linear graph. And the reason we do this is if we can um, produce a linear graph, we can then calculate a slope. It's really easy to do that. And from there, we can um, proceed and figure out some more information. So for this, this kind of give you a hint on what you're going to do. You're going to figure out uh, how to produce this linear graph. So you're going to look at your kinematics equations. And specifically, we're going to be looking at the delta d equals v naught t plus one half a t squared. And so specifically we want to know what's the proportionality between distance and time. Okay, now in this problem if you remember v initial was simply zero. So we're going to say what's the proportionality between distance and time? Well notice delta d is proportional to t squared. So how we linearize a graph, once we've determined the proportionality, what we, how we linearize is we're going to produce two points, two data points, our distance or displacement and our time squared, our time squared. So using these two values, if we graph them, in other words, if we produce a graph down here with time squared and distance, we should be able to produce a linear graph. Okay, so let's go ahead and show how we're going to do that. Um, so over here, if you notice, we already have our distances laid out, right? 0 0.4, 0 0.5, etc. And what we're going to do is we're simply going to square all these times. So let's fill this in here. So here we're going to write time squared. And we're just going to fill all these in. So this would be 0 squared, which is 0. Okay, and then we have 0.14 squared, which gives me 0 0.0196. And then we'll just go ahead and do that for all of them. Okay, so we'll go ahead and square 0 0.32, 0 0.10.
this is 0 0.0196. Point 0.10, um, let's do 0.46 squared, gives me 0 0.21, and 0 0.59 squared gives me 0.35, and lastly 0.63 squared, that gives me 0.40. All right, so here's my distances. So we're gonna just take our distance and our time squared and we're gonna produce, we're gonna create that graph. So why don't you push pause now and go ahead and graph distance versus time squared and see what you get. See if you can do I as well. So here's the graph that you should have gotten um, notice that this graph is extremely linear, so you can should have had no problem drawing in your best fit line here. Um, so let's move on to part I. Find the slope of your graph. So again, when you find a slope, you're going to try to use two points on your line, not necessarily um, from your data. Now this one is so linear, you could potentially you know choose a couple from your data. I'll try to stay consistent though. Let's choose one right here. So that would be um, a distance of, it looks like 1.5 and a t squared of 0.31. So we'll go 0.31 and 1.5 meters second. And let's look for another one, maybe right here. So that looks like it's about 0.21. Let's go with 0.21 and 1.0. Okay, by the way, if you should be using better graph paper on this when you're doing your, your actual labs um, and that'll make finding your slopes a little bit easier. So let's go ahead and find their slope. Notice here that this time we're gonna have a D divided by T squared right, d over t squared. And so when we do this, um, actually I guess technically this would be like a delta d over delta t squared, right? So when we do this, we're gonna subtract, so we got 0 0.31, whoops, 1.5 minus 1.0 meters divided by 0 0.31 minus 0.21 seconds squared, should be seconds squared, right? S2, S2. Okay, you do that um, and you should get, it looks like five meters per second squared. So you might be saying to yourself, wait a minute, how come we got five and up here we got 10, right? Up here we got 10. So what's going on? Well, let's go look at here. Remember we graphed T squared versus D these are proportional to each other. They're not equal. Our, to get our equal equation, we look it up here. And assuming V not is zero here, notice what we get. We get our delta D is equal to one half AT squared. Delta D is equal to one half AT squared. So if you rearrange this, notice what you get. You get delta D over T and our delta t, oops, over t squared. Our delta d over t squared, we just calculated that was equal to five. Well, delta d over t squared is equal to one half a. So it's not equal to a, it's equal to one half a. And so when we go ahead and calculate that, notice what you get. You get a is equal to two times five or 10 meters squared equals A. And that is exactly what we got up here. Okay. By the way, the accepted value for the acceleration due to gravity is 9.8. So as you can see, we were very close to that. So this would be a really good experiment to figure out our acceleration due to gravity. So I hope you wrote down your questions um, and you can bring those to class and I'll kind of address them tomorrow.